Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Captain Brooke Balding. On behalf of the presiding official, General James B. Hecker, Commander, United States Air Forces in Europe and Air Forces Africa, welcome to today's ceremony. This afternoon, Major General Derek C. France will pass command of the 3rd Air Force to Major General Paul D. Moga. Today's ceremony is considered an outdoor event. Therefore, headgear should be worn and outdoor protocol should be followed. Military members should salute during the national anthems. And during the ceremony, there will be several occasions when you will be given cues to stand and be seated. Before we begin, we would like to recognize some of our honored guests attending today's ceremony. Please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. Spouse of the presiding officer, Mrs. Terry Hecker. Spouse of Major General France, Mrs. Amanda France. Spouse of Major General Moga, Mrs. Amanda Moga, and their children, Maddie and PJ. Representing the 21st Theater Sustainment Command, Major General Ronald Reagan, and his spouse, Mrs. Brandy Reagan. Representing the community surrounding Ramstein Air Base, Mr. R Ralph Lismeister, County Commissioner of Kaiserslautern. Mr. Ralph Heschler, Mayor, Union Community and City of Ramstein Miesenbach. Representing the community surrounding Spangdalem Air Base, Deputy Mayor Klaus Rodens. Representing the institutions of the state of Ryland Falls, Mr. Marcus Klein, and representing members of the Ryland Falls State Parliament, Mr. Helge Schwab. Representing all airmen of United States Air Forces Europe and Air Forces Africa, Command Chief Master Sergeant Randy Kwiatkowski. We would also like to recognize all commanders, directors, chiefs, first sergeants, all other distinguished host nation, host nation representatives, fellow airmen, family, and friends. Thank you all for attending. The ceremony we will witness today is a military tradition rooted in history, dating back to July 3rd, 1775 when General George Washington drew his sword under an elm tree in Cambridge, Massachusetts to assume command of the Continental Army. The acceptance of the command flag is a visible demonstration of the continuity of command. From ancient times, armies throughout the world conducted ceremonies to commemorate victory over the enemy, to honor comrades in arms, and to celebrate special occasions. History reveals that in the Middle Ages, it was not uncommon for soldiers in the field to be unaware of who their commanders were or what they looked like. With the introduction of the formal change of command ceremony, troops were afforded the opportunity to witness the proceedings and see their commanders. It was the Continental Army of the United States that conducted the first official ceremonies in America, which serve as the inspiration for the ceremony we will see today announcing to all the authority of the incoming commander. The senior non-commissioned officer of the organization is traditionally responsible for the maintenance and care of the colors. And so today, the command guidon is entrusted to Command Chief Master Sergeant Stephanie Cates, symbolically expressing the special trust and responsibility afforded to the command's enlisted members. Ladies and gentlemen, Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of the anthems of the Federal Republic of Germany and the United States of America by Staff Sergeant Kessel and the USAV Band, following, followed by the invocation from Chaplain Barclay.
Freiheit. Du das deutsche Vaterland, dann klatscht uns seine Streben. Brüderlich geht er zu und Hand, Einigkeit und Recht und Freiheit. Sind es Glückes und Erfand, Blühe im Glanze dieses Glückes, Blühe deutsches Vaterland. Blühe im Glanze dieses Glückes, Blühe deutsches Vaterland. Oh, say, can you see? By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets rattle, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet Please join me in prayer. Holy God, it is a privilege to come before you today and express gratitude for life's experiences. We are blessed to serve in this part of the world. We are humbled by the goodness of partners and allies that stand alongside us to uphold the causes of freedom. God, we also give thanks for the amazing leadership of Major General Derek France and for his sacrifices as the Third Air Force Commander. Thanks for refining him over the last 36 years of wearing our nation's uniforms so he could be compassionate, selfless, and a humble individual gifted at leading our air forces in Europe and Africa and those and in, in these complex times. I ask that General France and Amanda find your continued guidance and blessings in their impending assignments. Oh God, thank you for also preparing Major General Paul Moga to lead Third Air Force in the days ahead. I pray that you will endow him with the exceptional wisdom necessary for this new role. Guide his efforts to provide inspiring leadership and wisdom to the wings, headquarters USAFIAF Africa, and with our partners as the demands upon peacemakers and peace seekers are increasingly are increasing exponentially around the world. I also pray for his wife Amanda as many will turn to her as well. In closing, God empower each of us to do our part to uphold peace and liberty. And please bless all those who have need of your divine intervention. This I pray in your holy name, O Lord. Amen. Thank you, Staff Sergeant Kazul, Yusefi Ban, and Chaplain Barclay. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce our presiding official for today's ceremony, General James Hecker. Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it sounds a little weak. Can you guys hear me in the back? You're all good? Okay, thank you. 
Well, first, uh, welcome everyone. <clears throat> we appreciate you all being here. And uh, I can't thank everyone enough who is responsible for putting this together. Obviously, this was a, uh, a very short notice change of command because uh, we had some issues with getting some people confirmed for a while in the United States. Uh, so we put to the, this together. I'm just going to do it this way. So we put this together in about, a, I don't know, two weeks maybe, a little less than that. Um, but I'm glad that it happened. And I'd like to, uh, to thank Chaplain Barclay um, for his invocation. Uh, when I was here 22 months ago on this stage, I was accepting the flag. And it was a gorgeous day, and the hangar walls were open so we could see out into the mountains, and I could see the majestic German you know, side here. Uh, and Chaplain Barkley evidently didn't pray enough because we didn't get a day that is as nice as the day that we had 22 months ago. But maybe next time you can hit it, right? Uh, also, Staff Sergeant Kozel, a great job on the national anthem, uh, very well on both of those. Um, and I'd like to give a special thanks to all our DVs in the front row uh, that are here today. Um, I'd like to thank Mayor Hetchler, Commissioner Leismister, Mayor Rodens, Mr. Klein, and Mr. Schwab uh, for being out here. You have a tremendous community, and uh, you love your military, and we love you guys. Uh, so thanks to everything that you guys do to make us welcome, and hopefully we do the same uh, for you. Today we're here to witness the change of command where Major General Trapper France reluctantly relinquishes command of 3rd Air Force to Major General Max Moga. Um, and we appreciate everyone for, for coming out for this historic event. You know, Trapper would be the first person to say that this wouldn't be possible without his wife, Amanda. Uh, and I think you know that too, um, but thanks for all the sacrifices you've made in the past and everything that you're going to make in the future if you guys move on. Uh, but thanks and sorry that we did this on short notice and your three daughters couldn't be out here, um, but I'm sure maybe they're watching uh, out in visual land. Trapper, it's been about four years that you've been here. Uh, before his current job, he was uh, the A3 did that for a couple years and then he moved on to uh, Third Air Force. And during that time, he's witnessed some very significant events. When he was the A3, uh, we had this withdrawal from Afghanistan, which uh, came quite hastily uh, and we weren't really prepared for it. Um, but due to the work that he did here, we housed several thousand Afghan refugees that came, that were helping the United States, helping NATO at the time. And if you looked out on this ramp, it was full of tents. And a large reason why that happened was because of Trapper and the work that he did as the A3 to do all the logistics to make sure that they were housed uh, properly, et cetera. And there was, he got help, obviously, from the entire, uh, not only Ramsign Air Force Base from the community as well to make that happen and make sure that they were taken care of. You know, he's in charge of 10 wings, 32,000 people. And these uh, wings go all the way up from the UK all the way down into Africa. And he's in charge of all of them and he's done a great job making sure that everybody was taken care of. Then we had this thing as he took over 3rd Air Force that happened in February 24th of uh, 2022 uh, when Putin decided to invade Ukraine. And prior to that happening, we were trying to make sure that NATO stayed safe. We were pretty confident that Putin was going to invade, but we didn't know how far he would go. And him and his wings, as well as our NATO counterparts, put up a bunch of defensive counter-air aircraft all along the borders in the Baltics and Poland and Romania to make sure that Putin didn't make a mistake and try to go any further. And after two years, so far it's succeeded. And we hope it, that it will exceed some more. Um, but we'll see what happens with Ukraine. Uh, but keeping them out of NATO was very important. And as you know, NATO has fully supported Ukraine as we move forward and will continue uh, to support 
Ukraine uh, into the future. There's been other things that have gone on during Trapper's command. A uh, couple coups, whether it's Sudan, whether it's Niger. Niger is still going on. Uh, for everyone else, a coup is something that you watch on TV and you go, oh, there's been a coup in this country. Not so easy when you're the third Air Force commander. All the contingency plans that you have to do. You know, do we have to evacuate the embassy in Niger? Do we have to evacuate the people in the country? Uh, do we have, we have to protect our personnel that are there, our military personnel? All that takes a lot of planning and, quite honestly, a lot of weekends uh, that are spent making sure that all that happens. And that's not seen out in the public, but behind the scenes there's a lot of work that goes into that, and I can't thank Trapper enough for the work that he did making that happen. And then getting ready for the future, if Russia does decide to keep moving forward, we have to make sure that we're ready. And I put together some priorities and Trapper turned those priorities to the wings and they made sure that they were taken care of. And he's trained and increased the readiness of the wings significantly over the last two years of his command. Particularly, he made sure that they knew the concept of agile combat employment to make sure that we could move before Russia knew where we were and that their bombs coming our way or their missiles coming our way or their one-way UAVs coming our way would fall on no aircraft. To make sure that we were agile enough to move around that they could not stay inside of our movements with their targeting cycle. And he did that. He also fulfilled a very important role in the community as a Kaiser Slaughter military community commander, where he represented Ramstein on several different occasions, making sure that the relationships between the local communities and the base were doing very well, and he did a great job at that. But he is moving on to bigger and better things. I wouldn't say better, uh, but he is getting a third star, which is uh, well-deserved. He's going to be what's called the AFCENT commander, and that's Central Command. And that's, if you pay attention to the news, with everything that's going on in the Red Sea, everything that's going on in Israel, everything that's going on with the Houthis, he's going to be in charge of all that. And it's going to be a very busy job. The good news for him is Third Air Force supports a lot of that. Uh, and he knows what we're capable of and what we're not. Um, but tell you what, if you need our help, be sure to give us a call and we'll do the best we can to get you what you need uh, for that next job. Uh, Terry and I wish both you and Amanda great success in the future. Uh, thanks for everything that you've done during your four years here at Ramstein and then everything you're going to do for our Air Force and the world uh, at your next job at CENTCOM. Now we got Max Moga, who's going to be uh, taking the reins here in a little bit. Max doesn't know, but the way that you figure out who the next commander is going to be is their spouse has to have the name of Amanda. <laughs> so we got another Amanda uh, that is uh, going to join us. And I think Max would tell you that, uh, that Amanda has been there every step of the way. And I had the opportunity to meet Amanda when she was Lieutenant Amanda uh, at Tyndall Air Force Base as a maintenance officer, uh, starting up the F-22 program. And she did a, a great job there. Subsequently, she's gotten out of the Air Force and has two great kids, Maddie uh, and PJ, uh, obviously who've made a lot of sacrifices with several moves throughout the years. Thanks for all your sacrifice. And Amanda, thanks for everything that you've done and will do uh, into the future. I've known Max for quite a while. He's got the perfect pedigree to take over 3rd Air Force. Uh, I've been on several assignments with him. The first one was in 2004 at Tyndall Air Force Base where I was learning to fly the F-22. He was initial instructor in the F-22. I went to Langley Air Force Base. He ended up going out there as well. And uh, he uh, was our demo pilot, uh, for the, the first demo pilot for the F-22. Then we kind of departed ways for a little bit, and then it wasn't until Shepard Air Force Base 
uh, where I was a 19th Air Force commander, where we hooked up again because he was a vice commander there at Shepard, and then uh, selected him to go take the wing command of one of the, the first F-35 squadrons there at Eglin Air Force Base, where he did a tremendous job. Uh, academy graduate, flew F-15s, F-22s, F-35s, over 2,600 hours, obviously combat capable, uh, capable of command, did squadron command at Elmendorf Air Force Base, did vice command, as I said, at Shepard, and then wing command at Eglin Air Force Base, has NATO experience, was the exec to the chief of staff of UCOM, uh, had a hardship tour where he had to go be the, to the NATO Defense College in Rome, Italy, so it wasn't too much of a hardship, I don't think. And then lastly, the last year, he's been the chief of staff of USAFIAF Africa. I know that the MOGA team is going to be great for Third Air Force and great for the Kaiserslautern community, and we really look forward uh, to welcoming you as the Third Air Force Commander. Thanks for everything you're going to do and everything your family is going to do. Uh, you're definitely uh, the right guy at the right time for the right job. So with that said, I think what we're going to do is we're going to give a medal to Trapper here uh, for his four years of service. So if everyone could please stand, and uh, we'll give him a medal here in just one second. Attention to orders. The President of the United States of America, authorized by an act of Congress on July 9, 1918, awards the Distinguished Service Medal to Major General Derek C. France for exceptionally meritorious service and duties of great responsibility. General France distinguished himself as Commander, Third Air Force, and as Director of Operations, Strategic Det Deterrence and Nuclear Integration, Headquarters United States Air Forces in Europe and Air Forces Africa, Ramstein Air Base, Germany, from 30 June 2020 to 3 April 2024. During this period, General France commanded 32,000 airmen across 10 wings stationed in three continents and two areas of responsibility. Focused on theater combat readiness, he synergized assets from two major commands to execute coordinated agile combat employment maneuvers across five countries. These efforts ensured initial operational capability, which he quickly put to use by pivoting these forces in response to the Ukraine crisis and set conditions for air defense of Europe's eastern flank. As the commander of the Kaiserslautern military community, General France built trust and exceptional partnerships as the interface between the United States armed forces and German government. His steadfast devotion bolstered support for both the host nation and the 54,000 American citizens residing in the largest American military community outside the United States. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of General France reflect the highest credit upon himself, the United States Air Force, and the Department of the Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce the Commander, Third Air Force, Major General Derek France. Guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren, and herzlich willkommen. Thank you all, commanders, distinguished guests, senior enlisted leaders, and Airmen of Third Air Force. I would normally say thank you for making the time to be here today, but for this week, since we gave you about three days notice, thank you for making the time to be here today. I know that many of you had to rearrange your schedules this week and over the course of an Easter weekend. So thank you for being here. As mentioned to our project officers, Steve Brinkley, Sharon from Protocol, we sat down last week for our first planning meeting and they presented me the checklist for a change of command. And it said things like, 
at the four month out point, do X, Y, and Z. At the two month out point, do these other things. And we were at the one week out point already. But they made it happen, because uh, this team loves a challenge. So thank you for working the countless details for this to uh, come together, proving that if your boss only gives you a minute, and it takes the last minute, it only takes a minute. I didn't say that exactly right, but you know what I meant. To our honor guard, our national anthem, your safety band, thank you for being here today. As I see the flags of our two nations marching shoulder to shoulder, it does my heart good to know that our nation stands shoulder to shoulder in defense of freedom every day. And it's a reminder of our alliance, our mutual trust, and our respect that our nations share as personified in these communities. And thank you for reminding us in our U.S. national anthem that we are a nation born in battle. And that whether it's at the height of prosperity or our darkest hour, we stand ready to defend it with our allies. For my maintenance team, thank you for letting us borrow this hangar on short notice. For those that are responsible for the static displays, you can see through the windows because it's March and it's Germany and it's cold out there. The machines look awesome. This hangar looks great. It is a special place for our families as well. Our daughter graduated from high school. And so thank you for bringing, uh, bringing that and making it a reality on short notice. To Chaplain Barclay, thank you for reminding us that God's sovereignty is far beyond any of our efforts and plans. And on a personal note, thank you for reminding me about his strength and endurance that I hold dear. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up on wings as eagles. General Hecker and Terry, sir, thanks for the trust and confidence in allowing me to lead the greatest airmen in our Air Force. Your vision and your support for the wings under your command are steadfast and truly appreciated. For Max and Amanda and Maddie and PJ, in a few minutes, I'm going to hand over this flag. And while we will pause for a photo, one of the reasons I'm pausing is I hesitate to let it go. But the reason that I will is because I know that General Hecker will soon put it in very capable hands with General Moga. And he will, in turn, turn and give it to very capable hands in Chief Cates, who has been a tremendous wingman uh, for me and for the Airmen of 3rd Air Force over the years. So, Max, you have a rock star team waiting on you. They are ready to work for you and for the wings. So get ready for an awesome two years, my friend. It'll go fast. You are absolutely the right pick for this job. All the best to you and Amanda and Maddie and PJ in the years ahead. To my teammates on the UA and AIRCOM staff uh, and across the Joint Force and the KMC, Ron, thank you for being here today. I have to say that as a third Air Force commander and staff, one of our roles is to connect the wings and the staff. And you all have made it easy. Your communication and your support for the wings has been outstanding. And on a personal note, thank you for your friendship and your hospitality and the things you've taught me just watching you lead. To my German friends and civic leaders, thank you again for being part of this. My role as the KMC commander has been rewarding based on the rich bond of trust and respect that our communities share. I've seen several community engagements across the United States Air Force in the, in the United States, and this is the gold standard. The support you give our airmen and the mission is second to none. Amanda and I will truly miss Germany and the KMC here. We've enjoyed exploring uh, the history, the culture, fashing parades, I know how to say hello. Um, and Max, you will get a lesson in keg tapping from this man right here. But don't worry, I've set the bar very low, so, <laughs> so be ready for that. However, it is the people that we have met that has made this place special. And they're sitting in these rows right here and countless in the community as well. Uh, our time here has been enriching beyond words because of you, so thank you very much. Uh, to Amanda and my girls and now my son-in-law, uh, which is an addition since I've been here, I can't tell you how much confidence it gives me knowing that we can tackle any challenge as a family. For our daughters, Erin, Maddie, and Claire, they're not watching. They're college age, and it's like 6 a.m., so they're not dialed in. But watching them roll with the punches of military life, managing to thrive and grow and become the young women they are makes me extremely proud. Amanda, thank you again for being such a positive part of the community. 
from driveway and garage yoga classes to countless hours advising the Bazaar Committee. I don't say it often enough, and not in front of this large audience, but your love, your support, your patience are what every day keeps me going. Having you as a partner in command, and more importantly in life, not to mention our 17th PCS, is something I don't take lightly and I won't take for granted. I love you more every day. I'm excited about this next chapter in our life. So please, if you would, take these flowers. Cue the flowers. As an inadequate uh, demonstration of, of my love for you, we'll enjoy them for the next 72 hours before we get on an airplane. So thank you. Today, I'm in the formals of Third Air Force. We've got several wing commanders here. You and your command chiefs are absolute rock stars. Thank you for making the trip down uh, for the ceremony today. Your leadership in the wings, your focus on the mission, your care of our airmen is inspirational in watching it as your commander. I've learned a ton just watching you lead and working through the challenges that, uh, that typically we deal with you. Thank you and your families for what you do every day. To the headquarters staff, the small but mighty team, your dedication, teamwork, your positive attitude, uh, your can-do attitude are incredible and make this a special place to work. Thank you for your support personally to me and to the wings that are part of Third Air Force. And for the entirety of Third Air Force, you are writing history. Your service, your innovation, your attitude, your sacrifice are keys to defending NATO, to developing each other personally and professionally, and delivering air power when and where it counts. You truly are freedom's guardians. Thanks for what you do every day. And so as Amanda and I uh, pull chalks here and get ready for takeoff, we consider ourselves both blessed for the opportunity to learn from each one of you and grateful for the rich experience and the many, many friendships we have made. Blue skies and Godspeed. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command. Attention to orders. Under the provisions of Air Force Instruction 51 TAC 509 and in accordance with General Order G2411 dated 03 April 2024, Major General Paul D. Moga is appointed Commander 3rd Air Force effective 03 April 2024 by order of General James Hecker, Commander United States Air Forces Europe, United States Air Forces Africa. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you the Commander, 3rd Air Force, Major General Paul Moga. Okay, well, uh, again, good afternoon, guten tag. Uh, thank you all so much for being here uh, to support this significant day for 3rd Air Force and a very special day for, for me and my family. I'd like to echo my thanks to those that pulled this event together today. Uh, Third Air Force staff, 86, headquarters staff, CHAPS, safety Band, Honor Guard, across the board. These things are tough enough to pull off with a month's notice, uh, let alone a week. So fantastic job and much appreciated. Uh, thanks to all the distinguished visitors in attendance. Uh, General Reagan, great to, uh, great to see you. Look forward to working with you. Commanders, chiefs, headquarters staff, representatives from our allies, partners, and certainly host nation. To the members of the KMC, thanks for being here as well. The German-American partnership here is stronger and more important than ever before. Ich glaube, 
dass unser KMZ der Goldstandard ist, dem andere folgen können. Und ich freue mich auf die Zusammenarbeit mit Ihnen allen. General Hecker, sir, sir, thank you again uh, for your words, for this opportunity. It is not one that I take lightly. And thanks again for remaining a leader that people want to follow, uh, not because they have to, but because they want to. And by the way, no Lieutenant Amanda stories, please. Joe <laughs> uh, France, Trapper, and Amanda, 3rd Air Force, and its, and its successes are a clear reflection of your dedicated, tireless leadership and efforts to support the missions and the airmen that accomplish them. Congrats on yet another successful command. I'll do my best to maintain the, the momentum that you two have established inside of 3rd Air Force. And Trapper, congrats again uh, as well on your imminent promotion and your next job at AFSEN. Uh, they will flourish under your leadership, I have no doubts. Uh, don't forget your UA roots when those tough uh, GFM and SDOB decisions show up on your desk. To my wife, uh, Amanda, to my family, my wife Amanda, kids, Maddie and PJ, you know, people say all the time in changes of command that um, we would not be here uh, without, were it not for our family. So I won't say it, but I will say that that statement could not be more true for me personally uh, for a thousand different reasons. So if, if you haven't met my family, I hope you take a couple minutes today to, uh, to introduce yourself. Uh, I think our kids are pretty cool. Uh, both are avid ice hockey players down in uh, Zweibrücken. Uh, my wife, Amanda, is an extraordinarily talented, genuine individual, and she cares deeply about airmen and their families. She's going to bring a lot to 3rd Air Force, uh, whether she knows it yet or, uh, or not. <laughs> I love you very much. I love, I love the three of you very much. Uh, honey and kids, please, uh, please accept uh, these gifts as, as my first of what will likely be many uh, bribes in this new job. <laughs> it's, it's in there. Uh, to mom, Alice, Iris, Nick, Dave, Michael, Alice, hope you're watching on Zoom. Love you all too and I uh, wish you could be here. We've got some nice Minnesota weather going on outside right now. Uh, okay, lastly, uh, for the past eight months, uh, albeit with a slight degree of separation as General Hecker's uh, Chief of Staff, uh, I have had the absolute pleasure of observing 3rd Air Force. Who they are, what they do, and more importantly, how they do it. Impressive is an understatement. Every challenge, no matter, no matter how big or small, is tackled with conviction, distinction, and an absolute will to win. To the men and women of this command, I'm proud to be joining your ranks as we continue our steadfast efforts to develop, defend, and deliver in the relentless pursuit of excellence in the business of all things air power, anytime, anywhere. Thank you again. Thank you, General Moga.